Hey all your friends, welcome back to the channel. Mr. Eric here and I've got a good one for you today. We are looking at the Meze Elites as you could tell from the unboxing there. And boy, I love these headphones. I really love them. Uh, so as usual, we will dig into what they come with, the build. We'll throw a couple of comparisons in there like with the Aria Stealth and the 8XX, uh, which are a couple of headphones that I had uh, on hand here. Uh, you know, I'll talk about my source, I'll talk about uh, pros, cons, everything in between. All right, so, so let's dig in, let's see what you get with the Meze Elite. Okay, so before we talk about the headphones themselves, you've seen this before, right? They come with two sets of pads. Um, these ones are the leather pads. They're really nice. Uh, they're a bit thinner than the suede style pads, uh, quite a bit thinner actually. And, you know, for me, I, they, they both sound good. I preferred it with uh, both comfort and sound wise. I preferred kind of the suede pads so though on them. The pads, of course, are awesome because they're magnetic and they just pop on and off, super cool. Uh, so that's, that's the pads. Obviously you saw the big case that they came with, right? The, it's like an aluminum hard case, pretty cool. Uh, little setup there. You've got a couple of cables. You got a shorter, maybe like a four footish you know, uh, 3.5 cable. These guys come with dual XLR entries like an Odyssey or a ZMF headphone. And uh, those other cables fit fine with these. It's not a weird setup like the, the 1570 that I reviewed not too long ago, which had some sort of a, a weird mini XLR setup. This is standard. I tried a heart cable with it, worked just fine, no issues there. The cable that I mostly used it with was the longer XLR cable. Uh, this is uh, maybe about six or seven feet or a couple meters long, right? And it does, it's kind of janky. I mean, it's its not as soft as I would like it to be, but it definitely, like, it didn't really impair my using the headphones at all. So totally fine, totally acceptable cables. And again, it's, it's a standard mini XLR, so easy to find a replacement, or maybe you already have one if you've got a ZMF or, you know, an Odyssey headphone on hand. Uh, and, and that's pretty much it, right? It, it's it's all, the accessories are all good and nice, very cool. Uh, but really when we start to get to special is when we start to look at the build. And, and that's where these guys really start to shine. Um, and, and you can just tell there's something special. Now this is a, a review unit sent to me by Meze. So thank you to them for sending this out. Um, I, uh, so this, this set, it's it's a little worn, right? Like I, I assume it's it's made the rounds to quite a few uh, reviewers at this point in time. But you know, I'd say they ha they've held up reasonably well over time. There's just a few little scuffs and things on them, but I mean, still my my impression is is very very positive with the build. It just all feels so smooth and everything's just put together so well. And for how big this headphone is, because it's I mean it's a big headphone. It's light, man. It is super lightweight, um, shockingly lightweight, I would say. Um, definitely when you're talking about flagship level large headphones, uh, it's it's right up there with the most comfortable that I've used. Uh, so no complaints on any of the build. I think it's fantastic. I think all, just like the Lyric when I reviewed that, you know, just Meze on these higher end headphones and even their cheaper ones, just the level of detail and just the thought and design and just, uh, again, this is another headphone where I feel like no matter, you know, no matter what angle you're looking at it from, it's just a beautiful headphone. Like it just, it's just nice, you know? And um, it, it doesn't, it, it doesn't scream, you know, extravagant. I don't feel like it's just all just really well done. Um, you know, headband here, car springy carbon fiber, you know, leather pant, leather suspension strap that kind of has like a mold to it, you know? Um, and then you get your choice of the pads. The slides, they're, they're not locking. It's just like a smooth, super smooth friction-based system. I didn't have any problem with that. You can see I'm pretty much using them on just about the smallest setting. So that's, that's something to kind of note. Um, and that's maybe another reason why I find the bigger pads more comfortable is just because it, it clamps a little bit better on my smaller-ish head. 
So I, I think most people aren't gonna have any trouble getting a good fit with these. Uh, you can see there's a pretty reasonable amount of extension there that you can operate within. So I, I think most people are gonna have a pretty easy time getting a good comfy fit with these headphones, all right? Um, I think that's gonna do it for build. I mean, it speaks for itself, honestly. I, I, I really think it does. Uh, it's just it's it's just a gorgeous headphone across the board and well made and comfortable and just just nice. It's just really, really nice. Okay, so let's get into sound, right? Um, how do I want to describe this thing? It is these are wide, they're rich. They're full, they're very large sounding, uh, they're, they're detailed. I know a lot of people criticize these for not being like as detailed as some other high-end things, but certainly with the Aria Stealth and the 8XX, which have been the main ones that I've kind of been comparing them to as I've been listening, it's, it's certainly at least on par with those, if not better, okay? Uh, but these, I mean, where these really stand out to me is they uh, always stay well separated. So the imaging I think is really good on them. It, but it, it's, it's just so full sounding. It's so full and rich and dynamic, but at the same time, it's like silky smooth. I mean, these, these are all day headphones if I've ever heard any, right? I mean, these things just comfort wise, weight wise, sound wise just i do not want to take these things off when i'm listening to them uh i i think i said in another video when i was talking about um uh, maybe it's it's my ru6 modi comparison maybe um for the first time in a long time the maze elite here has made me just really get into that zone where all i want to do is listen to them right like i just that's I, I don't want to stop when I put them on and start listening to them. Nothing that comes through these things is offensive. I had, uh, you know, I kind of put out a little post before I made this video and asked people just what, you know, what, what should I listen for? Uh, things like that. And people want to know how do they handle good recordings? How do they handle bad recordings? They handle it all uh, with grace and ease and they make everything enjoyable. Somebody suggested like a Pantera song that I listened to and like that metal style of music is not for me like in any way shape or form maybe you know 20 years ago i got into a little bit of it but not anymore you guys know me i'm mostly like an acoustic folk music maybe you know 60s 70s rock maybe a little alt from the 2000s but mainly softer you know a lot of acoustic stuff so i don't seek out that heavy metal sound I, with almost any other headphone, if I would have listened to that song, I would have stopped. But because I was listening to it through the elites here, like I listened to the whole thing and I was still, you know, comfortable and picking out details, analyzing, you know, cymbal strikes and things were clear and forward and sparkly, but they didn't, you know, they didn't grate on me at all. Um, guitar riffs were powerful, textured, you know, just rich and just crunchy, uh, but again, crunchy in like a good way, right? Just a, just texture for days, but not over sharpened, harsh texture, just, just interesting texture where you can really kind of get in there and feel the music when you're listening to it. Um, so I suppose I should, at this point in time, tell you what I was mainly listening to it with which RU6 is my main DAC that I'm using. I've got two of them. I sing that thing's praises probably enough at this point, uh, but I'm mainly using it with my Quicksilver headphone amplifier. Uh, so there's a review for that as well if you wanna check that out, which I love that thing. Um, it's not without its quirks and downsides, but boy, that pairing, RU6, Quicksilver amp, Maze Elites, and you're just, you're in it and you've got the detail and you've got the space and but it's all just silky smooth and it, while being very clear as well it's it's separated enough that like even during busy passages you can still pick out everything but at the same time it's all melded together that it's such a cohesive holographic just puts you into the music 
sound. I just, I love it. I mean, it's, it's phenomenal. It really is. So uh, another question you might be asking is, well, uh, you may have heard somebody, another person commented like, well, what does it sound good with? What are specific pairings and things like that that it sounds good with? So I did try it with uh, my Liquid Platinum. I tried it on the Hi-Fi Men EF400. I tried it on the iFi X can and they, these are not picky. I mean, they are not picky. Um, they sounded good on everything, but the Quicksilver amp, that was that was special with these. I mean, it really brought them to life and really amplifies kind of that holographic, get you into the track type of stuff. And I'm pretty into that, as you can tell, right? So uh, they just sound great with everything. And uh, again, genres of music, like I said, I listen to everything from some heavy metal stuff to my typical acoustic stuff to some hip hop stuff and and some EDM stuff, which isn't really my thing, but I think it handles it all with grace. I mean, when if you're looking for something to contrast it with, right? I I mean, I, I listened to the Aria Stealth with it as well and uh, going back and forth. I, the Aria Stealth, I, I haven't ever been like a huge fan of that headphone. Hi-Fi Men sent me that. They allowed me to just hang on to it for comparisons and things like that. I mean, there's no doubting its technical prowess and that it's just like a good, clean sounding headphone, but it also doesn't really speak to me in any real or significant way. You know, I mean, I think a lot of people love it because uh, just like a lot of people love the, the A90 or the A90D, right? They're, it's a clean sound. It's hard to argue with it when you're listening to it. It doesn't sound bad, but again, I just think there's more interesting stuff out there to listen to and for me the mazes fall into that category in that it just it's not as clean as the aria stealth at least not with the the suede pads it could i mean the the leather pads make a difference in that regard and and they do make it a little bit cleaner but for me it's it's about that richness and just getting into the music and you know what i'm what i'm looking for anymore most of the time when i'm sitting down to listen is can I just stop worrying about all the technicalities and all the, you know, the source chain and do I have everything perfect? And really my my main game is just how quickly and easily can I just sit down and start enjoying myself and not think about things too terribly much. And that might seem weird for like a reviewer of headphones to say, but uh, I don't know, I guess that's where I'm at right now. And the mazes are perfect for that. I mean, I can just put these things on and instantly I'm into it loving it don't want to stop right as far as the 8xx goes i think for me they're they're more my bag than the aria stealth for sure uh, because they do the spatial thing really well um in that regard i think they're similar to the mazes and not i'm not that the mazes are as big or as well separated as the 8xx but it has that same kind of feel of putting you in to the music. Of course, the AXX is, is a much brighter listen and it doesn't have the weight and the richness that the Mazes have, uh, which I just have really, really been enjoying. Um, so uh, EQ settings, right? That was another thing that people asked me about. And not that I'm a huge EQ person, but I did pick up a Lokius recently just to have to play around with a little bit right like i don't really want to be into software and tweaking things when i'm listening but i can reach over and twist a knob you know here and there and experiment a little bit and i would say that there there were a couple of tweaks that i preferred with the mazes on most tracks i wouldn't say every track but on most tracks and that's i the upper mids i brought up just a little bit in the lower kind of that upper mid lower treble those were the two knobs on the Lokius that I just, I, a little bit, right? Just like a little, maybe you're talking like a 15 degree turn on, just, like, just a little bit, just enough to bring just a slight bit more clarity to these when they have the suede pads on them. And then also the mid bass, I would drop just again, kind of the other direction, just a little bit. By no means were these settings required, but just as I've been, you know, dialing in, what really sounds good to me with the mazes, that's kind of where I ended up using EQ. Uh, so I think, I mean, I think that probably says enough about the Maze Elites. 
I suppose the question is price, right? Are there a $3,000 headphone new, I believe is my understanding of it. Are, you know what, I might as well, I better check. You know, I'm not a new, you know, I don't buy headphones new, but let me just look just to make sure. Okay, so they're a $4,000 headphone new. Are they worth it? I think so. I, I mean, I would never pay that for them. I, I see them on the used market and they, you can get them, it looks like pretty close to me to $2,000. Like you could pick a set of these up. I think for that price, they're absolutely worth it. Um, do they compete technically with something like the LCD5 or the Sesvara? I don't know. I It's been long enough that I've, since I've had those headphones that I don't, I'm not comfortable just coming out and saying one way or another. If I'm gonna go by just popular opinion that you see and by from just like memory, I don't think so. I mean, I think probably if you're looking for absolute detail retrieval, something like the Sussuara, the LCD5 is probably gonna get you there. But, and I love the Sussuara, right? I, I would take these, here's where I'm at. Like I would take these over the LCD-5 in a heartbeat, okay? Um, I just, the LCD-5 were impressive, but the, I didn't think they were all that comfortable, and I thought, I always liken them to more like like a very hyper-tuned sports car where you're feeling every bump in the road. The Susfara, I, I thought, was still very comfortable and very technically capable, but it was just smoother and easier to listen to. The Susfara, I remember it being much, it's more of an airy, open, sound where these are a richer open sound right so these are rich lush liquidy smooth the susfara was light and fast and and just really just i don't know it, it was a special headphone but again the susfara you've got amp requirements that you really have to stay focused on and source chain that you really got to be focused on i don't feel like that's as big of a, a deal with the mazes these guys like I said, they sounded great on everything. I tried them on, but I just, I love them on the Quicksilver amp. So they're a phenomenal headphone. I feel like they're right up there with the top players. Maybe they're not gonna be the absolute end all be all for detail retrieval and in absolute technical ability. But if you're talking just pure enjoyment, they're definitely up there, if not the best that I've tried, right? So again, re just remember that those other high-end headphones, like it's been a while since I've I've listened to those. Okay, so, but these guys, they've they've got me convinced. I I have just so enjoyed having them. Uh, I can totally recommend them. I think if you if it sounds like something that you would like, from based on how I've described them here, I would not hesitate to pick these over something like an LCD five or Susfar or something like that, uh, especially if you can find a good deal on them. They are. Phenomenal headphones, phenomenal design, phenomenally comfortable. Um, they're winners. They're definitely winners in my book. Uh, will I buy a set? Mm, I don't know. <laughs> maybe, maybe, right? Uh, the the most expensive headphone that I own currently is ZMF Verite Opens. Uh, mine were a little beat up when I got them, so they're back at ZMF getting refinished, and uh, hopefully they'll be back soon and I'll be able to you know, do a review of those and share those thoughts with you. And then after I get those, then maybe I'll make, uh, make a decision on whether I keep those, whether I get these, whether I just stick with my 8XX, which I think is a high value, uh, very capable headphone. <sighs> All right, enough gushing for one video. Thanks for your time. I appreciate you being here. Questions, comments, alternative opinions, drop all that stuff down below. Uh, I don't have to send these back quite yet, but I probably will pretty soon. But if, uh, you know, if you got any, anything you want me to, to try to do before that, you know, just let me know. I thank you for being here. Thank you for your time. Always appreciate you. Hopefully I'll see you in the next one.